Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures review of this 2021 Infiniti QX80. This vehicle in other countries is extremely capable off-road, but let's see how well it can do here in US, guys. It has the 5.6 liter V8 paired with a seven speed automatic transmission. Puts out about 400 horsepower and 413 foot pounds of torque. Wonderful engine, love it. Comes stock with 32 and a half inch tires on 22 inch rims. So we're gonna have to be careful with the rims today, but let's get into it and see how it does. We are in four wheel drive auto and just gonna do this high speed off road. See how we do. Tried to keep it clean on the way in so I don't have a good feeling for you of how it will do. We are at 20 miles an hour. And actually a little bit lower, about 18. Bottomed out the suspension on that bump and back there. So here we are at 20. Yeah, uh, 18 to 20 range. 20 is the goal. This one's kind of right there at the goal. I would say, I mean, it's pretty smooth. So even at 20, I'm pretty sure the wheels came off the ground there. And even at 20 miles an hour, if things bottom out, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's it uh, has a pretty good damping system for when it bottoms out way smoother i know i always say this in every video but way smoother than the ram rebel and that one's an off-roader smoother than the wrangler rubicon and gladiator rubicons but nowhere near things like the trd pro sequoia Before we get into all of the off-road stuff, let's take a look at the different modes. So this one has very few modes. Basically you have snow mode and you can see that it remains recessed. I mean, just barely, it's hard to see, I can feel it, but it's pretty hard to see. And then up here, right there, it just shows snow mode and to go into, well, to turn off traction control, simply just push that button once and it will bring up the traction control off light and that collision alert will be disabled as well. Uh, when you hold it down, it doesn't do anything. So no point in holding it down. And then you have the tow haul mode and that just brings up a tow light right there. Then to shift into four wheel drive, you can do this one at essentially any speed, probably under 55 is best, but you can switch that over to four high and it brings up this screen here. And let's see, to go to four low, shift into neutral and then push this down and turn it to four low. And you can see it switching to four low. Four low automatically turns off traction control and the pre-collision stuff. I'm going to let it roll just a little bit and it still seems to be struggling. The problem is you're not supposed to do this in drive. There we go. Um, a lot of vehicles, especially with the electronic one, you can't feel it shift in you can't feel it binding or anything because you're, you're not physically shifting it in four wheel drive low. So you need to be moving at like one mile an hour, but you need to be in neutral as well. So sometimes it won't go in. If it's not, just move a little bit, put it back into neutral. Maybe while you're rolling, it should shift into four wheel drive low. And that's it. So we'll go through the different uh, drive modes and you can just see here, it always shows what mode you're in right there. So switching back to four high, that was an easy shift. And then back into auto. So it always shows you what four wheel drive mode you are in.
Here in four-wheel drive auto with traction control on, I had to go full throttle and you can see it was still limiting power quite a bit. And basically it struggled to make it up this, but it was able to do it. The all-wheel drive system quickly engaged. So in four-wheel drive auto, it just almost immediately engaged the front axle. There was no real delay there. Turning off traction control makes a huge difference in the ability to control the vehicle as your throttle input equals the output from the engine. While it was a little bit more choppy here, it was much more controlled from the driver feel. In snow mode, it's really limiting throttle, so the traction control kicks on almost immediately and completely eliminates the wheel spin. It takes a lot more time, a lot more effort, and it does make it eventually, but again, snow mode is the most intrusive for the traction control. In four-wheel drive high, it performs very similar to four-wheel drive auto, and the traction control is limiting the amount of throttle I can give it. Even if I go full throttle, this is all the wheel speed that I get. And it's not quite able to figure it out. If I would have kept at it longer, it would have been able to make this. Very similar to four-wheel drive auto with traction control off, there is a lot more control and precision with the throttle when traction control is turned off as the computer is not cutting power to the engine. It just makes the drive that much more controllable. Even in four-wheel drive low, the QX80 only has a crawl ratio of about 38 and a half to one. And I mean, it makes a big difference with the transfer case being a 2.7 to 1 in low range. And it definitely helps, definitely more controlled, but it could use some lower gearing. Okay. We are in four wheel drive auto, doing the steep hill climb. And we're going to do the hard line first, of course. Traction control is on. We're just in. Regular, not snow mode or anything. This is how you drive it every day. Okay, so it's just inching forward. <clears throat> I can make this little spot, but I don't think I'll make the next one. four-wheel drive auto with traction control off. So here we go. So much better on throttle control because it lets you spin the wheels with traction control off. So I don't have to, I'm not even half throttle right now. Full throttle, it is still struggling quite a bit. Calling that quits. With the traction control off, you can see that extra wheel speed does allow it to climb a little bit easier, but it still gets stopped by the hardest portion of the hard line right here. We'll go to four high locked, see if that makes any difference. Okay, struggling there even. Had I taken the slightly easier line where the driver's side rear wheel is not in that deep hole, I think it would have made it in four wheel drive high. Okay. 
four wheel drive low. Um, come on. There we go. Four wheel drive low automatically turns off traction control. Now we have better gearing. And. so close I'm full throttle it's still cutting throttle on me but can't quite make it in this spot Wow I'm very surprised that it wasn't able to do that we're gonna change line just a little and There we are. So you can see right here, the rear driver's side wheel is in the same hole that the Ford Ranger trimmer got stuck in. The QX80 isn't able to make it out of that, just like the Ford Ranger wasn't able to. I have to readjust my line, and then it really makes this pretty easy once I'm out of that hole on that rear wheel. Much more of a workout than I expected. Was able to do it, but definitely took a lot of effort. As far as ground clearance is concerned, we have that front lower valence or air dam there, a plastic skid plate, basically an exposed everything else. The engine oil pan hangs down pretty low. Everything else is kind of tuck up at least, but the fuel tank is fully exposed, no protection on it, and it does hang down a little below the frame rails, and the exhaust is also below the frame rails. Okay, four-wheel drive low, first gear, and we're going to see how well it can go down this hill. It doesn't have a hill descent control, as far as I know, and so we're going to rely entirely on gearing once we get down i forgot to clean the front camera but we should be okay still i'm still i'm on the brake right here i'm not going to let it go through this section without me helping because of that right there so this big giant hole the one we got stuck in on the way up and then that gets to be about 20 degrees, so like a 40% grade, pretty steep. And off the brakes. We're below five miles an hour, it's not too bad. Back on the brakes, we don't hit the front end. All right, not too bad at all. <clears throat> uh, this is one of the other things with the Patrol is it has lower gearing as well. And like I said, in the US, there's just not a lot of aftermarket support for this either. So if you wanna get better systems, you might be importing parts from Australia. You can use a Titan front end under this. I don't know how much that'll cost you. You can find older ones for like a couple grand if you need a new front differential and you can throw in the Titan version of it, which would be much stronger, much bigger than this. But the US really doesn't take these vehicles off-road that much. It's starting to change a little bit. It just doesn't have the aftermarket support like Toyota does. And of course, nothing like Jeep. 
Thank you for watching Engine Adventures off-road review of this 2021 Infiniti QX80. It's quite capable off-road. I was a little surprised it didn't make it up that steep hill on the hard line in four-wheel drive high, but we were able to make it eventually choosing a slightly easier line. I believe I had a vehicle with a rear differential lock and four-wheel drive low, not make it in that exact same spot. That was the Ford Ranger trimmer. And the back driver's side rear just gets buried in the dirt. And then of course the passenger side and the front driver's side are in the air. So you're basically left with one wheel to pull you up. This couldn't do it. The Ford Ranger trimmer couldn't do it. Had to readjust my line. Then I was able to make it in four low. Ultimately, this vehicle has so much potential to be an excellent off-roader. They just kind of neuter it for the U.S. market. It makes me a little bit sad. I love it. I love it overall. It's a great vehicle on-road. Can tow like almost class leading. It's not the highest. Ford Expedition, I think, is the highest at like 93 or 9,700 pounds. But this thing's up there at 87 or 85. So I'll put that up on the screen. But basically, it's up on the upper end. Just, you know, the Dodge Durango, I believe, is 87. <clears throat> the Tahoe's up there 87, but the Suburban's a little lower. So you're up there with the best in the class. And ultimately a great vehicle. If you liked what you saw, hit subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos. Give me a thumbs up and comment down below. If you didn't like it and you give me a thumbs down, be sure to comment down below and let me know why. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.